The gun and their way. Aaron Brown with that great bend speed, charging hard, chasing down the Jamaican to the next exchange. Canada, Jerome Blake now, down the back straight. Blake keeping pace with the Jamaicans. The, Amer the uh, British have gone out well with the Chinese. Handing off now to the third leg, Brendan Rodney for Canada. Rodney charging hard. He has Jamaica in his sights. Here we go, the handoff to Andre de Grasse. Canada's in a hole. Canada's in a big hole right now. Great Britain with the lead. Here comes de Grasse. De Grasse from fifth. At the finish, Canada gets bronze. The Italians torture at the line. Tripping for goal. A good run by Aaron Brown through that bend. Day 15 of Tokyo 2020 coming to an end. I've had very little sleep, but I'm having fun. Historic day for Canada yesterday. You just saw some highlights from the 4x100. The men obviously came away with the bronze. What a close by Andre de Grasse. While you were all sleeping, we actually caught up with RBC Training Ground alum Jerome Blake excuse me, and Aaron Brown, RBC Olympian. I would love to just throw to a clip. They uh, dissect Tokyo 2020 their hopes and dreams for Paris, and uh, we just get really candid. It's been 12 hours, give or take. How are you feeling? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know, whenever you come out and get a medal, you're always excited, and it kind of takes a while for it to hit you, and I think maybe once we get it in our hands, then it'll be like, okay, we actually achieved something pretty special here. But, uh, yeah, I'm still just kind of reliving the moment, um, thinking about the race, reflecting, and, how we can get even better, you know, um, at Paris in three years. So <laughs> we're already thinking about that. And uh, before that, the world championships and back to back years. So there's more opportunities for us to get better and grow as a team. How much sleep did you guys get? Um, personally, for me, I think I went to bed at 6 a.m. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my first Olympics. So, you know, as we're going in, because I was with him, uh, Aaron, and the rest of the team once after we finish. Um, uh, the press conference and he used to tell me like just take it all in because it's the first one and you know enjoy the moment so I stayed up pretty late um, just watching all the media stuff and the one that caught me off guard was uh, what's the, the prime minister re you know tagged me in a little message so it was kind of cool so <laughs> I was looking at that I was like oh I'm gonna have to go home and vote now oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was a cool experience uh, Olympic debut Jerome, we met a few years ago. Um, it's been a pleasure to see your career just do this. What's your first main takeaway of this Olympic experience? The biggest one for me was, you know, listening to all these veteran guys and, you know, you know, listening to them that like the mere fact that I'm actually, you know, going to do this and, and I belong here. And then that's the biggest thing I had to learn that, you know, as young as I am and as inexperienced as I am when it comes to, you know, big and major championships, like, I have to, you know, believe in myself and, you know, understand that I belong here. RBC Training Ground alum, has it hit you that you're an Olympic bronze medalist? No, I mean, <laughs> this is something that we, you know, spoke about, like, years ago and, you know, um, and the, the plan with the RBC Training Ground program, of course, is, you know, to find the next Olympians from Canada and, you know, the mere fact that, you know, I'm an RBC Olympian now. I can, you know, call myself an RBC Olympian. Finally, it, 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 you know, it's a special moment for me. You, of course, three-time Olympian, two-time Olympic bronze medalist. Uh, you're such a mentor. You're the vet. We actually have a clip from 2019, uh, which seems like a million years ago now, after the pair before the <laughs> pandemic, of uh, you just mentoring Jerome right after the 100 meter where you won in Canadian Championships. So if you look over your uh, shoulder, we'll just well, I'm super right excited to just come out here and just show everybody what I can do, you know, show, show them why I deserve to represent Canada. Jerome Blake. I think being scared and nervous is one of those things that actually would help a sprinter.
it was good. You know, it's, it's you know, fourth this year, and I'm, and I'm happy with the outcome, but I'm still not satisfied. This, this is my RBC Olympian, Aaron Brown, and this is who I look up to. This is who I, I sort of model myself after. I think this guy's next up, man, honestly. So look for big things in the future, man. I, I can't wait to go to war with this guy. Tokyo 2020, you going to be there? Yeah, that's, that's a dream, you know. If I'm there, you know, if I get there to represent Canada, that's, you know, that's the height of the sport, and that, that's the ultimate goal for me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, what is so special about Team Canada right now? I think it's just the depth that we have, you know, a lot of people up and coming and, you know, adding people to, you know, supplement the relay team with me and Andre and uh, Brendan, the veterans, you know, um, we have new people on the rise and that's always uh, bodes well for the future and uh, makes it ex excited for the potential. You know, um, like I said, we have the talent for, bigger and better things in the future. We're back to back bronze medalists, but I feel like we can uh, raise our standard and, and get higher in the, the rankings next time around. It looked like you guys were having fun though as well. Yeah, um, you know, we're, we're all friends. So um, anytime we get a chance to run together, the chemistry is always there and we're always excited to have an opportunity to represent the Maple Leaf together. And it's just kind of a fam familiarity between us and, um, you know, we enjoy it. Uh, the Olympics go by in a blur. Um, <laughs> You know, it's already over now for us. So <laughs> it's like it felt like forever for it to start when we we're here, and then it's just like bam, it's done. Mm -hmm. So once it starts, it goes, and you gotta soak it all in. Um, so yeah, I'm just enjoying these last moments with the guys, and then you know we'll go back to our respective camps and train and get ready for the future. How are you feeling after your 200 meter? Um, I'm 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 hopeful and optimistic. You know, um, in 2016, I didn't have the result I wanted. I didn't make the final. Here I was able to make it and I uh, didn't have the best result in the final, but at the same time, I'm amongst the best in the world and I know that I'm close. So um, sixth place, you know, I'm a couple of spots away from a podium spot and that's just my my aim for the future. So I'm going to go back and reflect with my coach on that one as well and uh, see what I got to do to tune up to get me amongst the, the podium finishers. What makes you hungriest for Paris, which is only three years away, as you just said? Yeah, oh, man. It's equal, <laughs> you know, finishing third when we have the potential for gold and, uh, you know, finishing sixth when I feel like I have the potential for a podium spot. Um, I'm hungry for both. So it's just like, man, I just want to get back out there. And even though my body's tired, my mind is like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I just want to, you know, keep getting better, keep working on my craft and uh, seeing how far I can take this thing. But, um, you know, I got to give myself some rest and finish out this season before I get ahead of myself and, uh, you know, go into the future. Please take at least a week off. At yeah. least a week, yeah. Aaron. <laughs> maybe, maybe not a week, maybe a couple of days. Uh, <sighs> we we'll go to Toronto, see my family. Um, you know, my, my wife is there with my son. Finally got to introduce him for, with my family for the first time, which is nice. Oh. And so um, I'll be able to reunite with everybody and, and enjoy that for a little bit. Show him his shiny metal. He'll probably want to eat it and, <laughs> and stuff. But, Fight the metal. Yeah, <laughs> just um, grab it. But, you know, we'll have a couple moments to soak in. Canadians fell in love with your moment in the mix zone after your 200 meter when you showed the, the photo of your wife and, and son. And I would love to just throw a clip uh, recapping that. I wore my son and my, my wife. On my bib, if I can get it out. Um, just as a reminder for who I run for, you know, this is what matters to me most. And as long as they're proud of me, I'm happy at the end of the day. So I run for Canada, I run for all my fans, but most importantly, I run for my family. <laughs> everyone, everyone fell in love with that moment. Um, Jerome, what does it mean to you to have teammates like Aaron and Andre and Brandon, everyone um, that's, you know, they've all had so much success, so much experience under their belt. What are you hoping to learn from them? You know, the the biggest thing, you know, for me uh, is that I've learned so far from all these guys is just like, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's going to take some time and take some getting used to and, you know, and learning. You're always learning, you know, once you stop learning, you know, you're pretty much finished in this sport if you're, you know, once you stop learning. So the the biggest thing, you know, just try to just take little things from each of them, you know, probably just Andre's, you know, his confidence or whatever, like his championship performance skills that he has and Aaron's, you know, Aaron is just, he always shows up when he needs to. So, you know, that's one thing I like about him. Brendan, he's, you know, 
overly confident. So like that's some of the things I like about all these guys. Everybody has something that you can take away and, you know, implement in, into what you're doing and, and, and learn from them, you know, being veterans and they've competed at the highest level. You know, this is my first experience in the Olympic Games and I feel like I, you know, I dealt with it very well. Um, you know, still, you know, a little bittersweet moment, but I mean, at the same time, you know, I'm happy that, you know, I'm able to come in here and get a medal because no medal here is guaranteed to anybody. So, I mean, the mere fact that I have one, I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy about it. Before you ran the 100 meter in 2019, you said, ain't no thing like a chicken wing. <laughs> so don't change too much. No. What, <laughs> what are you most proud of in this whole journey? Um, The mere fact that you know, I'm able to actually win an Olympic medal. Like I, I never thought that was possible. So, you know, that's, that's one of the biggest things. And, you know, I, and also stay true to myself, which is one of the, the biggest things as, you know, a lot of people try to tell you, oh, you gotta change a little bit and all that. But, you know, for me to be the best version of myself, I think I have to stay the same, you know, which is just being the dorky, nerdy kid from Kelowna. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron? Oh. Uh, just the resiliency, um, how far I've come, you know, no Olympics is guaranteed to anybody. And, you know, I, even though in Rio, I was like, I'll be back and telling myself that uh, you, you're never guaranteed that. Um, so the fact that I got this opportunity to go out there and show myself and um, show how far I can come and bounce back from, you know, what I consider one of the lowest points in my career um, running the individual events, even though we came with the bronze in the relay. Um, I still wasn't satisfied with how I performed in, in Rio. So I can leave my uh, Tokyo experience with my head high um, because I know I made the final, which is one of my goals, and got a medal in the relay, which is another one of my goals. Um, didn't hit all my goals, but, you know, that's just the nature of the sport, and that keeps you hungry to keep going. So um, you do well enough that you're proud and satisfied, but uh, just short enough that you're still hungry and, and motivated for the future. And uh, I'll leave these games knowing that, you know, um, we came out here, left a legacy, um, and we're part of something special, a special group. And I feel like for the future, this is like a catalyst for, for us doing even better things in the future. Thank you so much for taking the time. I'm going to let you guys get a little bit more sleep because uh, <laughs> rightfully so. I, I hope you celebrated last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Historic night on the track. Again, bronze medal for the 4 by 100 meters. That was just Jerome Blake and Aaron Brown. And historic night on the pitch. Team Canada won gold in penalty kicks. My nerves, I think Canada's nerves, were, were all exhausted. Uh, here's uh, just a quick little clip. I mean, if you've been living under rock, I'm sure you've seen this, but let's all just continue celebrating. Here's the penalty kicks. And then we have a little surprise for you right after this video. Julia Grosso from Vancouver to win it for Canada! Canada came! Canada conquered! Canada gold at Tokyo 2020! Let the party begin. They came in as second favourites. They went behind. They clawed their way back in. The party started in Canada. Canada, say good morning to your new Olympic champions. We are joined live by RBC Olympian and midfield extraordinaire, Ashley Lawrence. Gold medal around your neck. It's almost been 24 hours. How are you feeling? Um, yeah, it's pretty surreal. Um, just so much emotion. Uh, it's just been a very long <laughs> tournament, uh, just with a lot of ups and downs. But I think the team uh, has shown our character. And I would just say the Canadian spirit, Canadian DNA throughout uh, these past uh, several weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just to have this gold medal. Uh, I just think about the players um, that came bef before me, before us, um, but uh, ultimately uh, towards the future and the future generations. 
as I was looking up to uh, Team Canada uh, when I think back to London 2012. Yeah. Can you show that? Just look into the uh, break the fourth wall and let's see that gold medal. <laughs> That's so lovely that you said, you know, looking back to the past too, because it does feel like there was a narrative of you doing this for the Carmelina Moscatos, the Amy Walshes, all these, these wonderful women that came before you as well. Did you feel that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think uh, ever since I joined the team, um, I felt welcomed, um, embraced, and um, just pushed to, to be uh, myself on the pitch. Uh, it didn't really matter um, my age. Um, and just for all players, I think uh, the environment that Canada creates, um, it's to be yourself um, and um, it's just so inclusive. And I think that just speaks volumes to mm -hmm. the people um, that are in it, the staff, the players. Um, and yeah, again, I just think back to uh, the uh, London 2012 Olympic Games and I was at home cheering on Team Canada and um, I was inspired uh, by that that Canada US historic game. <laughs> um, I know most all I think of us we're, were. we're still yeah. all just recovering too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like the semifinal at this Olympics is kind of just yeah. brought back yeah. some of those feelings. Um, and then of course, um, the winning the first ever bronze medal for Canada and just that goal by Diana Matheson. Um, uh, it's just something that is will forever live um with me and for all Canadians. And yeah, it's just been so cool to see players. Um, stepping up uh, throughout this tournament. And um, yeah, the future is definitely bright. I hope you had fun last night. <laughs> Can you confirm just <laughs> nod? Yes. <laughs> That's a definite yes. <laughs> um, but it's not just, you know, uh, retired Canadians. It was, it was other Canadian athletes. It was American athletes who got a huge shout out by Abby Wambach. It just felt like so many people in the football international community rallied around this team. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I think that um, for one, uh, we continue to put on like great performances um, and we're just consistent. And I, I feel like it's just like a long time coming. Mm -hmm. um, it's proven when we're back to back round medalists, um, top 10 nation in the world. Um, but I, th I think it's ultimately it comes down to um, the people and just like the humans that we are. Um, Again, I'm just, I feel so special and honored to be part of this group um, because uh, we just elevate each other. Uh, we push one another and it just gets the best out of, well, me as a player in person. And so, yeah, when you see that level of just like team spirit, it just becomes infectious. And yeah, I think that we uh, just display that type of uh, just team mentality and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, other teams kind of rubs off on them as well. And um, ultimately it's great because you see so much growth around um, the game and especially in Canada where there's uh, a lot of improvements to be had, but mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of steps forward and this um, really did solidify um, a, a lot for Canada. Um, and even with limited resources, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I want to jump off too, because Christine Sinclair, of course, uh, greatest of all time, could talk about her for a million years. Yeah. But in the mix zone, she said, this is the time for us to get a professional league in Canada. There's not a domestic professional league. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I 100% agree. I think that um, that is something that um, should have been happening years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, we continue to show that uh, we have top players in Canada and uh, we have the right to have that option to play at home. Um, the game is continuing to grow and there's so many leagues around the world um, and we're a top 10 country. So uh, I just think having a league, um, having teams uh, where uh, players can have that option to play at home yeah. uh, and to go overseas, but just make that um, available um, would be so important. Um, and, um, we would continue to find, uh, the next, those next Christine Sinclair's, Kadisha Buchanan's, uh, et cetera. Well, there's a lot of buzz around it. And, and there was a lot of buzz around you as well. You were such a difference maker in the midfield. Did you feel that love throughout the tournament? Cause your name was just popping up every single day. It seemed honestly, um, I would say just the support from Canadians. Um, it was felt throughout our team. Um, and that was definitely a boost for us 
Um, although, of course, the context, not really having fans here. Um, but yeah, we felt it. Um, and it's just amazing as we went throughout the tournament. We just said that we grew that, throughout the tournament. So yeah, we felt that sport. And just for myself, I think being at my second Olympic Games, um, yeah, it's pretty surreal. But um, I just feel like uh, I've grown um, just with my role on the team. And I'm hoping to have more of a leadership role and um, kind of be that link with some of the players with it being the first Olympics and um, of course playing with a lot of the veterans as well. So yeah, I'm happy um, to continue to contribute to the team in any way. And um, there are so many players that stepped up and um, just made the difference for this team and helped us uh, get this gold medal. How special was it to know that Christine Sinclair, Desiree Scott, Sophie Schmidt, all those veterans uh, came away with a gold medal. I mean, it means everything. Um, I think it's like a daily conversation, even if it's not said. Um, there's just so much respect for those players. Um, and um, I just think, I think back to how much they've put in uh, to this program, to this country, and they really did pave the way for us. And so, uh, this ultimately was for them, um, for players uh, like you mentioned, like Christine St. Clair, um, day in, day out, just an example for all of us. Um, such a hard worker, um, never complains, and um, just uh, a legend. And so getting this, it's so important, of course, for Canada and um, hopefully all of the young people that are looking up uh, to us and hopefully striving to maybe play for Canada or any other sport. but knowing that they can believe and dream and that it's possible. But yeah, it's for really those players that um, paved the way for us. I don't know. I mean, you probably haven't been able to see all the messages, but there are so <laughs> many people saying, this is my kids 1972, like summit series. Like it just, it, yeah. it just went viral. And so I hope you do know that you've birthed so many dreams. Even me, I'm like, man, should I start soccer? <laughs> no, that's a joke. Really bad, really bad. And I don't know how you ran <laughs> in that heat. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, you're obviously going to go home in probably 36 hours, 24 hours, really quick turnaround. What's the first thing that you're wanting to do once uh, your feet are back on Canadian soil? Honestly, relax, like breathe a bit. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like right now I, I'm doing a bit of that, but of course we're celebrating and um, I feel like we're still kind of on like a high, like the adrenaline is still kicking in, but just be with friends and family. Um, and it's going to be nice to be back on home soil. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Just keep it pretty simple. Who would you like to thank? It, it takes a village, so please take the time and, and thank whoever you'd like. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of people, um, but yeah, I would say my family for sure. Uh, just a constant, uh, their support, uh, just thinking back to when I started and um, always being there for me, uh, the love, the encouragement, uh, and uh, yeah, my friends back home in Canada as well. Uh, I'm, I'm really playing in France, so mm -hmm. I don't see them often, but uh, we always connect in and uh, having that uh, energy helps so much. Uh, and yeah, my teammates uh, on Canada, I think this past year has been really difficult. Uh, we weren't even really able to see each other that often to get into camps, but we did such a good job at, of adapting mm -hmm. and it just speaks volumes to the group, the staff. Um, and yeah, I think we show that throughout the tournament and um, yeah, I just want to thank the staff, the players and um, just everyone uh, back home. There was such a lovely photo of the staff wearing your medals and standing on top of the podium, which was, it was just lovely because again, we, we celebrate 16 days when it's actually a lifetime's worth of work. So it, uh, it was just a lovely photograph and it was a historic, lovely day. For Canadians so appreciate all that all that you've done all the hard work and um just the momentum again a lot of dreams birthed last night 24 hours ago so uh enjoy the last 36 hours I don't even know what day it is I know I'm like is it Tuesday what time is it what, what is month it? is it yeah. I don't know but uh <laughs> again maybe just hold up that medal once more because uh 
Those are gorgeous. Oh, like a uh, Price is Right. Right? Do, 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 do. <laughs> Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> price is Right rules. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashley. I appreciate your time so much. Thank you. We're going to uh, throw up a few clips, and then I'm going to invite Soph for, um, for uh, Soph's Notes, everyone's favorite segment. Thank you so much, Ashley Lawrence. Hello, I'm here. here. <laughs> Are you here? I can't see you, Sophie. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this has been the funniest show to produce because have you noticed you've lost the lights in your background? <laughs> no, I haven't. Do I not look as fresh? <laughs> you, you do. I also work. don't like my lipstick today. You just look like there I, may I'm have like... been a power outage. And now I'm oh. just going to fix your name on it the was... screen. <laughs> it's been oh, a day. You know what? I don't mind being Ashley Lawrence. She's an Olympic champion. So, <laughs> oh, these are it's a live that. digital show. Oh, my goodness. What? Okay. It's, oh, it's, the light keeps flashing behind you. And, it, and I was going to make a joke about how lightning does strike twice, but it's it's done it like 10 times. So I can't even make that joke anymore. Uh, anyway, so <gasps> notes tonight. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but there was another bronze medal won today by Laurence Vincent Lapointe and her partner, Katie Vincent, in the 500-meter canoe double sprint. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you've ever been so excited that you've literally flipped out, um, but let's just show you the video because it is hysterically perfect for Canadians. Let me just find it. It's been a day. <laughs> Clearly you've got a combination of both. Well, you're going to be very hard crew to beat. There you go. Yeah. Oh. I think they were too intent on congratulating each other and they weren't really just uh, oh, they're incredible. moving their paddles around, were they? Oh, Olympians. They're just like us. That's exactly. That's what we would do. <laughs> I know. But you know what? It's so hot and it was so humid today too that it, it was probably kind of a nice relief <laughs> to cool off a bit. But I don't know how cold the water was. Uh, well, Michael Taylor said that it, when he was doing, when he was in canoe kayak, it was like he was yeah. sitting in a bathtub. So the I don't canoe swallow, that cool. yeah. Yeah. But oh anyway, Lord. we should probably close uh, this, no. this show yeah. today. Oh, no, the, the, the gold medal was blinding me and now I'm just, I'm seeing stars. So let's <laughs> close the show. <laughs> Day 15, we're at the Olympics. This is what you can look forward to. Allison Beveridge gets set to compete in the Omnium Scratch Race. We talked to her a few days actually ago. She obviously competed in the Women's Team Pursuit and Track Cycling as well. So she's closing out her competition at 9 p.m. Eastern. And Kelsey Mitchell, Women's Sprint Semis. She's been absolutely on fire. She's a world record holder, uh, hoping to do big things, bring home some hardware. And um, I don't know if we can actually even cut to this shot, but she's, of course on this wall, RBC Training Ground alum, Kelsey Mitchell. And uh, we will be connecting with her tomorrow. The Olympics are coming to a close, but we still got lots to talk about and lots of action. So we'll see you tomorrow. And thanks so much for joining us with Ashley Lawrence and uh, Aaron Brown and Jerome Blake. It was a lovely day at work.